Hello, third grade, and welcome to lesson 3-4. In this lesson, we're going to continue working on the same concept of applying the distributive property and other properties that we've learned, except this time we're going to do it when we have eight as one of our factors that we're working with. Okay, so pay attention to what they did here. They didn't make one cut in the array. They didn't split it into just two pieces. Here they split it into four pieces. They took the array, we know it was eight times eight, so they cut it into groups of two at a time. So they're going to count two of those rows at a time. Now we know that two times eight is 16. And since there's four groups of twos to make eight, so you're going to have 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16. So you're going to add it together four times. Okay, now before we get into our guided practice questions that you see here, I'm going to go over some of the notes with you that we would have taken down. While we were completing this lesson. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the notes that we were taking down. Uh, let me go back and show you the video one more time because I think it didn't share my screen while I was doing that. So let's go ahead and share the screen. We're going to go back and look at that video together one more time to make sure that we understand how to go through and do these multiplication facts. How can you use doubles to multiply with 8? Think about this question during the lesson. At a school fun fair, students try to toss a table tennis ball into a bowl. There are 8 rows of bowls. There are 8 bowls in each row. 
How many bowls are there? What operation should you choose to find the total for an array? Select your answer. You use multiplication to find the total for an array. Look at the array for 8 times 8. How would you describe this array? There are 8 rows with 8 in each row. You can use 2's and 4's facts to find 8 times 8. You can use a 2's fact to find 8 times 8. 8 times 8 equals 4 groups of 2 8's. Sixteen plus sixteen plus sixteen plus sixteen equals sixty-four. So, eight times eight equals sixty-four. Another way to find eight times eight is to use a fours fact. Double a fours fact to find eight times eight. Eight times eight equals four eights plus four eights. Thirty-two plus thirty-two equals sixty-four. So, eight times eight equals sixty-four. Describe the two ways you used to find eight times eight. You made four groups of sixteen, and you made two groups of thirty-two. There are sixty-four bowls in all. Now you know how to use doubles to multiply with 8. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our notes for this lesson. Now, we're going to be doing the same thing like I said earlier. Uh, we're going to be using the properties that we know when we are multiplying with 8 as one of our factors. So the example I gave you over here is eight times five. So I have my array that has eight rows with five in each row. I can split it into, in half into four and four more. So four times five plus another four times five. I know four times five is 20. Another four times five is 20. When I add them together, I get 40. Now what we saw in the video, which is something that we haven't done yet, is they split their array into more than two groups. So they took their eight, and they use their doubles facts, they split it into two. So they split their eight into four groups of two. So instead of splitting it into two groups, so this is the same thing as saying two times five, and then over here another two times five, right? Because we split that eight, this was eight times five. So I split it into two, four, six, eight plus another two times five, plus another two times five. So if I'm going to add all of these parts together, I'm going to have 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10, which is going to tell me that eight times five over here is also equal to 40. So I did the same thing, I multiplied and I use a distributive property, except I broke it up into different size pieces. So here I, I broke it up into four groups with two rows. So four groups of two rows in each one with five in each row. Over here, I split it up into two groups of four with five in each row. So I still got to 40 as my answer in both of them. Either I split it in half, so I have two groups of four rows with five in each row, or over here I split it into four groups with two rows in each and five in each row. So I either split my eight into two plus two plus two plus two, or I split it into four plus four. So over here, I did four plus four. Over here, I did two plus two plus two plus two. Either way, I didn't take anything away from my numbers. I didn't add anything extra in. All I did 
was I counted them in smaller groups at a time because maybe I didn't know my four times tables yet and I wasn't sure. So I wanted to split it into smaller groups. Now for our guided practice, for numbers one, two, and three, it says write a multiplication equation for these and then solve. So it told us multiply eight times three. So I can write eight times three equals N, a number. And I don't know what that is. Now I can split this again into two groups of four if I want to. I know four times three. I want to split it into two groups of four. It's going to be four times three plus four times three. I know four times three is 12 plus another 12 is going to equal 24. So eight times three is going to equal 24. For my next question, it says multiply five times eight. So the way I would write that out is five times eight equals a number, or I could put A or I could put B. I can put any variable I like, it doesn't matter. Now I can split this up into four and one, or I can split it into two and three if I wanted to. Let's do two and three because five, I'm gonna split it into two plus three over here. My eight, I split it into four plus four. So two times eight plus three times eight. Now two times eight I know is 16. Three times eight is 24. So five times eight is going to give me 40. Next one, multiply eight times one is equal to a number. And I know one group of eight is equal to eight. So eight times one is equal to eight. For numbers four onwards, Number four says multiply, you can draw pictures or use counters to help if you need them. So we have eight times seven. I can split this into five and three if I want to, if, in case I don't want to do four and four again. So I can do five times seven plus three times seven, which is equal to five times seven is 35 plus three times seven is 21. So eight times seven is going to be the sum of that, which is going to be 56. So eight times seven over here, it's going to give me 56. So our next question for number five, it says, what is the product of eight times four? So I can split this into four and four if I want to, or I could split it into five and three, or I could split it into two and six. So let's do two and six because we haven't used that combination in a while. So two times four plus six times four. I know two times four is equal to eight and six times four. I know six times two is 12, 12 and 12 is 24. So 24 plus eight is going to give me what? It's going to give me 32. So I know eight times four is 32 or I could have split it into twos, into two groups, two equal groups, four and four. I know four times four is 16, plus another 16 will also give me 32. Number six says, define the product of six times eight. So I can split this again into five and two if I want to, or three and three. We can do three and three. So that's the same thing as saying three times eight plus another three times eight. Now I know three times eight is 24. And I know that from one of my problems up here, eight times three equals something. We found out that it's equal to 24. So 24 plus another 24 is going to give me 48. Right, the fours added together give me eight. The twos added together, together give me that four. Let's go on to number seven. Number seven is asking us what is the product? What is the product of 10 times eight? Now we know any number times 10, we just put a zero on the end of it. So 
10 times eight is equal to 80. For number eight, we have nine times eight. We need to figure out what nine times eight is equal to. So we can split this again into uh, five and four, or we can split it into three and three and three, right? Three plus three plus three. So this is the same thing as saying three times eight plus three times eight plus three times eight. Now, again, we know that three times eight from our earlier problem way up here, three times eight is equal to 24. So this is the same thing as saying 24 plus 24 plus 24. And once you add all those together, you're going to get an answer of 72. So nine times eight is equal to 72. So over here, we split it into three groups, right? The other ones we split into two groups. Our example up here, we split into four groups. Just make sure whatever, however many um, groups you're breaking it into, that you're distributing it into, that you're keeping track um, and you're not forgetting to count any of those numbers. Our last one for our guided practice for number nine is eight times three. Now we've already done eight times three multiple times all over this page. We know that eight times three is equal to 24. So this takes you to the end of your guided practice third grade. If you have any questions for lesson 3-4, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.